If you're thinking about a centralized heat recovery ventilation system for your home, it may fulfill all of your wildest dreams or it may disappoint you. So today I'm going to talk a bit about them, give you the, the inside knowledge, the um, pros and cons and the different options and why you may or might not use it in your house. We've been selling and installing uh, heat recovery ventilation systems for many years now. Uh, behind me you can see a Stiebel Ultron unit. I just wanted to let you know that we aren't affiliated with Stiebel at all. They are one of many brands that we use. But today we're going to use this unit as an example to explain um, all the bits of information that you're probably keen to learn about. So a heat recovery ventilation system is fantastic if you love fresh air. and if you, you know if you love fresh air because you, if you're like me, you complain really often when it starts getting stuffy in a room and you like having windows open, right? But then there's other issues associated with that where it might be winter and you've got the heating on inside and if you have to open the windows, then you're gonna let a lot of heat out, right? So a heat recovery ventilation system is great for um, introducing fresh air into the home or your office or your building extracting stale air, let's say the air that has been breathed and rebreathed many times, gets rid of smells, gets rid of moisture. Um, so it's really good at that. But what it's not good at, or what it doesn't do, is it doesn't heat or cool your home. So sometimes we get calls from people who think that they can replace their air conditioning system, for example, with a HRV system. And unfortunately, with the vast majority of HRV systems, it doesn't work this way. The heating and cooling is totally separate. What the HRV system does is it helps you keep the or retain most of the energy that you've already created. So you might have a, let's say, a hydronic radiator system in your house and that heats up the room, it heats up the walls and everything, but also heats up the air. And so if you open the windows, that heat escapes. So let's leave the windows closed and let's imagine we've got a HRV system in our um, heated home. So what happens is we've got outlets, if we have a centralized system that is, we've got multiple outlets around the house. And we might have, um, let's say, one in the, uh, in the toilet, and one in the bathroom, we'll have one in the kitchen, or maybe a couple in the kitchen, a couple in the living room, and then we might have one in each bedroom, and then in the master bedroom, we might have two as well, because that bedroom's a bit bigger. And so, in those areas that we, um, uh, that we spend a bit of time in, let's say the bedroom, because we sleep there for, let's say, roughly eight hours, um, the living room, because that's where we socialize, we might watch a bit of telly. Um, so in those areas, we're supplying fresh air. But in the other areas, such as, such as the kitchen, where there's moisture being produced and smells, we're extracting from there. And the same in the bathroom and the toilet, we're extracting from those rooms. And so what happens is we introduce fresh air into those areas where we spend time, and that's good, we're pushing some of the stale air out, and that stale air makes its way through the home, and it's getting sucked out in these areas, the kitchen, the bathroom, the toilet. And along with you know, when it's sucking it out, it's taking the moisture, as we said, and the smells and um, the stale air. And so what happens is you're basically, it's really slowly but continually cycling this air through your house, this fresh air. And the benefit of this is that obviously it freshens the air so it doesn't get stale. It takes out the moisture and the smells. But another great thing that people will notice is that A, your house is quieter because you can have, uh, if you have a well sealed house, you don't need to open the windows. You don't really hear the outside, the, say the traffic anymore. Um, you don't get the same issues with dust as well, where people often report that they are you know, not having to wipe down the furniture as often because they don't have the windows and doors open. Because the HRV system is, it's not only supplying the fresh air and exhausting the stale air, it's filtering this air as well. The unit behind me is pretty big. You can get smaller units or you can get decentralized units too and you can find um, other videos on our site about that. But this is a pretty large unit and this might, um, do a large, let's say, a single story home or even a medium size two story home. And so this is the heart of the system. This is where the fans are, which push the air around and the filters. So if we take this off here, 
In here, if I unscrewed these two screws, I can pull the filters out and you can easily replace them yourself. Um, and then we've got a control panel here where you can control the system. And so usually something like this would live in, uh, let's say the laundry or a linen cupboard, maybe even the garage, um, but ideally centrally located in the house because it has all of the pipes um, basically starting and finishing there. There's one big pipe, it's not shown here, but there's one big pipe which um, ex the egg extraction air, so I've got my hand over it, it's actually running right now. I've got my hand over it, I can feel air being blown out. And this is the air extraction, so, uh, so sorry, the discharge. So this is all the exhaust air goes outside and it goes to a grill like this, which is on one of your walls, or you might have a roof cowl where you're blowing that air you don't want any more out. Now there's another one of these, which is connected to, well, which is actually this one here, and that's your fresh air intake. And obviously these uh, spread apart a little bit, so you don't get, um, you're not sucking back in there, you're just discharged. Uh, but that's, that brings in the fresh air. But then we go, uh, we uh, have this larger size ducting, and it goes to these manifolds. Now, we've got, uh, that's a big one, that's a big manifold here, and then we've got a smaller one here. And what happens is this again splits the pipes down to smaller, smaller sizes and this is what goes to each outlet. So you can see here, this is a single outlet and this is an um, air supply. I can tell by the, the shape of, of the outlet that this is for supplying air. So this is what you would have in, let's say, your bedrooms, um, <clears throat> your living areas and, and those sorts of areas. Then on this other side, we've got air extraction. And you might notice that this actually has two pipes connected to it, whereas this one only has one. So this is typically you would have a double connection like this in your shower, because in the bathroom you generate a lot of steam and a lot of moisture. So uh, instead of having, say, two of these outlets in your um, bathroom, you have a single one, but it's connected to two pipes, so you double the rate of extraction in those rooms. Now, in the toilet you just have a single one of these just with one pipe, but they all, all the small, these 75 millimeter pipes, um, finish or get connected to this manifold. And the bigger pipe goes from the manifold to the unit. And there's one of these for the supply air, so the fresh air, and there's also one for the exhaust air. So that's what you need to allow for uh, if you're thinking about the centralized system in your house. There is quite, this is pretty pretty substantial in size. Um, I'm sort of a medium sized guy, I would like to think anyway. <laughs> and uh, we've got this and this is sort of as big as a small, like a bar fridge basically, but it's hung on the wall. And what all we need to it is uh, a power point to supply power to this a condensate drain, so as it removes moisture from the air, um, it collects that and we have to discharge that. So make sure you allow for a, a waste pipe with a trap, um, which is where the condensate water will drip into so it just drains away without you having to think about it. Now the other thing is you can have, there's always, each unit comes with, well not each, but most units come with a controller on the face, which is great. You don't actually need to control it much, right? It's working 24 hours a day at a low rate to make sure that uh, you do have that fresh air and it's not annoying. It's not like air conditioning where it's blowing in your face sometimes. This has the little pipes and the little, little outlets and inlets because it moves a small amount of air over a long period of time. Now, sorry, I'll go back to the controller. So. Uh, this unit has a controller on the face, which is great. We can change the speed of the fan if we need, etc. But you can also have one of these inside your house and it can measure, you know, depending on the brand and the controller topics, etc. It can be as simple as only changing the settings, like the speeds, or uh, it, it can show you when the filter needs to be changed, things like that. Or you can have ones that detect the level of, um, say, uh, carbon dioxide in the air um, so you can see or it, it knows when to ramp up if the carbon dioxide level rises you don't have to manually go to it let's say you're having a party and that's why it rises 
you don't have to manually change that. It'll automatically detect that and change it. And there's some other ones that have some other interesting features but aren't really that important. The most important thing to look for when you have a HRV system is the noise level. You want to make sure it's silent so that when it is working um, in your bedroom, say especially, it's not going to keep you awake. Now, you can hear in the middle of the night when it's dead, you know, dead silent, you can hear sometimes the faint sort of sound of, of air blowing through the vent. Now, 99.9% .9 of people will find that fine, but I'm just warning the 0.1% of people that uh, might find that unbearable. <laughs> And so you would make different provisions for that um, and that comes down to the design. So make sure that you get a design done first and all the vents um, or inlets and outlets, the unit, everything is shown on the plan. So you have confidence in um, how the system is going to perform. So like we talked about before, it basically introduces air on one side or some parts of the house and extracts it on other sides. So the air flows through. So you want basically to ensure that the air is going to, um, let's say, I'll give you an example of a bad position to put a, a grill or um, an outlet for fresh air. A bad position would be in a bedroom right near the door which goes into the hallway because the air just wants to basically come down and it's going to go through the door into the hallway and find its way to an extraction point. So really you want that um, fresh air supply on that complete opposite side of the, the room to the door so that the air gets introduced and then it has to basically make its way through the room or push out other air from the room to get extracted. So that's how you ensure that you have good fresh air supply or exchange um, in your house. Now, another question you might have is, well, what size do I need? Well, it's based on volume and the conditions of the house and what you're looking for. So it depends on the number of air changes. So the minimum um, number of air changes you really want is about 0.3 air changes per hour. But sometimes you might go up to, you know, a couple, two air changes an hour, maybe even higher. It really depends on um, your, your particular project. But um, whoever helps you with that should talk you through what your air changes are and why they are that way. So if you can't fit one of these big systems in, you can choose a decentralized type of system where you have all of these um, sort of individual wall units which live in the wall and they have a big, big grill on the wall. When I say big, you know, maybe um, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters in size. And they're, look, to be honest, they're the second best thing after a centralized system because they produce a bit more noise um, and it's a bit harder to position them in the walls. We often find people find it hard to find, uh, you know, a few suitable spots because you have cupboards on the walls or it might not be on an external wall because it has to be on an external wall, obviously, to be able to exchange with fresh air. So if you can, I would suggest the centralized unit because it is quieter, it can service the whole house really well. You can put the, the vents in the, um, in the ceiling, in the wall, in the floor, there's a lot of options, whereas you don't have those options with a decentralized system. Now I'm going to go to a common mistake that we see with uh, these centralized systems and it's that people will get one in, into an existing house or even a new house and the actual um, HRV unit itself will be installed fine, you know, that's not a problem, it's quite simple, you hang it on the wall. All of the ducts and everything are co connected correctly, all of the vents are correct, but the, the, the ducts that they have, see those grey ones, the 75 millimetre ducts that come um, as usually with the systems, they're just installed in the roof space. And the roof space is an unconditioned part of the house. It's different. The, what's happening in the roof space is different to what's happening inside the rooms. And so what that means is, well, sorry, I left out an important part. These pipes that come as standard with these systems, they're made for Europe, right? And they're uninsulated because in Europe, everything is within the building, like insulated envelope. And so, sure, they can run these in the roof, but their roof is really well insulated. It's basically the same as the rooms in their house. And that they use, you know, you see a lot of European houses use those um, roof spaces as storage, like lofts. Uh, and 
here we don't have the same luxury we don't build our houses the same way so the ceiling is usually where like the disti distinguishing line between the um, conditioned um, envelope and the unconditioned envelope so if the pipes those ducts 75 millimeter ducts are run in the unconditioned envelope well what's going to happen your heat recovery capability is basically blown it's gone it doesn't even it doesn't count for anything anymore in summer it's going to heat up a lot because the roof space is generally much hotter than the rooms below. So you're going to think, geez, it's getting hotter in here. I thought this was a heat recovery system. And you'll put your hand up to the, to the outlet and it's going to be blowing slightly warmer air than you would expect. And that will actually be heating your rooms. And the opposite in winter, you will be losing heat in that um, unconditioned space and it'll be cooling your rooms down. So <clears throat> make sure that either if you're using these, these ducts that come with it, that it's um, within the conditioned envelope. So that means <clears throat> sometimes people run um, bulkheads or even in the roof, they might make a sort of like a reverse bulkhead in there and have that all insulated and have the pipes in there. But make sure that it's insulated so that you're not exchanging energy. We even see sometimes some installations uh, have um, air conditioning ducting and you can actually make that work because that's, that's insulated, right? Um, it, it's a little bit different. It has um, different pressure loss characteristics than this rigid pipe because if I touch this, sure it's bendy, but I'm squeezing that and I can't, I can't bend it, you know? It's not like squishy, whereas air conduct, you can just flatten if you wanted pretty much. Um, and so that, what that means is that the air conduct, the silver round stuff that's pretty big, that has usually, if you had the same size, which you can't get in air conduct, it would have higher um, pressure loss, which means that it's harder for the unit to push the air to the end. And if it's not actually sized or designed properly, you might find you're not getting adequate air supply or extraction um, to the rooms as you need. So today we've gone over what to expect from a HRV system, what not to expect, so don't forget that, that's pretty important. Um, some things to consider and some things to avoid. Uh, and if you are looking for a, a HRV system for your house, whether it is centralized or decentralized, um, you'll find a link below. Um, Stiebel Ultron is one of the brands that we do recommend. They do make very high quality and um, high performing equipment. So uh, amongst other brands, you might find some of their stuff uh, on our site below. And if you do choose to purchase one of the HRV systems, you can purchase it with confidence because we've tested it and we know that it works and it will work for you too.